the summer of 1953, it was announced that an atomic bomb of foreign origin had been exploded somewhere outside of the United States. Shortly thereafter, it was indicated that this atomic reaction, according to scientific reports, had originated in a remote area in North Pacific waters, somewhere between the northern tip of the Japanese islands and the Arctic Circle. This is the story of that explosion. quelque chose de nouveau pour le monde entier, professeur Bronté. Oh, voilà un bien grand mot. Peut-on avoir une copie de votre discours Et sans doute la publiera-t-on après. Professor Montel, I'm a Clary of the Herald Tribune. Oh, yes, how do you do I understand that you're going to Vienna to address the uh, Central European Federation of Advanced Science. That is correct. I read the paper on the emission of neutrons and collision of nuclei. Thank you, professor. Would any member of the American Atomic Energy Commission be present I doubt it. Would you excuse me, gentlemen? Les passagers à destination de Genève sont priés de se présenter à la douane, au contrôle des chambres et à la police, munis de leurs billets, de leurs cartes d'embarquement et de leurs passeports. Ceci vient d'arriver à l'instant. Le professeur Hanoff. Il l'a envoyé à l'autre adresse. Tu l'as traduit toi-même? Oui. J'ai l'original dans la serviette. Nous en parlerons tout à l'heure dans l'avion. Tu es contrarié? Pas du tout. Professeur, excusez-moi, il y a deux ou trois points que je voudrais être clarifié. Professeur Montel, dites-nous une chose. Devons-nous confirmer ou réfuter ces questions de la commission? Une chose, je ne comprends pas. Peut-on avoir une copie de votre discours? Vous allez devoir vous excuser, mes gentlemen, le plan est en train de se faire. Qui est la fille? Je ne sais pas. Dis donc, tu la connais, toi, Henri? Aucune idée. Et toi? C'est la BBC avec les nouvelles news bulletins. Professor Montel, famous nuclear physicist and atomic scientist, has vanished while en route to attend a conference in Vienna. Professor Montel's disappearance is a complete mystery to the police. Authoritative sources reveal today that the former Nobel Prize winner is the fifth noted scientist believed to have vanished behind the Iron Curtain. Professor Montel was last seen at the International Airport in Vienna. Speculation as to the whereabouts of Professor Montel continues. Ten days have elapsed since the distinguished scientist vanished, and so far police have been unable to offer any explanation. Authorities are now convinced that Professor Montel was not kidnapped, and that his disappearance was part of a prearranged plan. Airport officials in Vienna revealed that the scientist carried a diplomatic passport. The search for Professor Montel continues into the fourth week. It is interesting to note that while the story has been given front page space in newspapers in the United States and all other parts of the free world, Pravda, the official mouthpiece of the Soviet Union, has as yet failed to take note of it.
Kojaku. Right, so. Corporal Lee Sackwell. Right. Mr. R.J. McDougal. That's right. Mr. Trenton Merdi. That's correct. Jones. I'm afraid you're mistaken. My name's McDougal. You're a dead ringer for an officer I used to know in the submarine service. I'm sorry. Dougal? Yeah. My name is Eddie. Your instructions. There is a taxi waiting for you. The driver knows the address. Taxi number 63. Number 63. This is it. Better wait for me. No, I go now. Wait a minute. What if I need you again? Where can I find you? What's your name? Eddie. Please and follow me. Watch your step, please. Turn G hot and all off. Don't tell me your name is Eddie, too. Eddie is the password. I'm Hokkaido Fujimori, Commander Jones. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thanks. For a minute there, I thought this was something out of Inner Sanctum. <laughs> ah, you've lost a little weight. I'm on a diet. <laughs> I bet Captain Taylor put a little fat on it. Where is he? I'm sorry to tell you. Your friend is dead. Dead. His plane crashed, returning from an Arctic expedition. No one survived. He never did like to fly. Why did he want me to come here? What was the 5,000 for? It's an advance payment for a job Captain Taylor was certain you would do for us. Advance? Yes. When do I start? Without question. Why talk? If Taylor lined me up for the job, it must be kosher. Some people might not exactly call it kosher. In here, please. Gentlemen, Commander Jones. Mr. McAuliffe. How, How do you do, sir? Colonel Schumann. How are Schumann. you? Mr. Ellsworth. How, How do you do? And Professor Montel. Montel, the scientist? Yes. Everybody and his brother's gunning for you, Professor. They say you skipped behind the Iron Curtain. As you can see, only a wooden door. Glad you're here. Thank you, sir. Ah, quite a layout you got here. What kind of business you gentlemen in? The business of investigation. The scientific investigation of these uninhabited North Pacific islands that lie in neutral waters between the free world and the Iron Curtain. Uh -huh. Our deductions make us believe that one of these islands 
We don't know which one, Mr. Jones. Has been prepared as an arsenal for atomic weapons. Your friend, Captain Taylor, volunteered to undertake a photographic mission to find out. Volunteer? Yes. For free? For free. Is that when he had the accident? It was no accident. His plane was shot down. This photograph we have just printed came from the camera of his salvaged plane. 30 years in the Navy and he gets killed for a picture. For free. Each man has his own reason for living, Mr. Jones. And his own price for dying. This was Captain Taylor's price. Well, there's nothing there, Professor. It's a washout. I wouldn't be too certain. Extend these lines. They could be atomic vault constructions. And over here could also be part of a country from... Look, uh, look, before we go any further, Exactly what country do you men represent? We represent many countries as private individuals. We are scientists, former statesmen, businessmen, all volunteers, acting independently for a common cause against a common enemy. As private individuals, we can conduct this investigation on a scientific basis without violating any neutral waters. And if what we suspect is verified, we can then make our findings public. And what good will that do? Don't you think the truth is worth knowing? Don't you believe that factual proof will establish once and for all both the identity and the intention of the aggressor? Who knows? But where do I fit into the picture? We want you to command a ship for an inspection tour of these islands. What kind of a ship? A submarine. We know that four times during World War II, you commanded a submarine reconnaissance patrol in this very area. As I recall, you were, were extremely successful in these waters when you fought my country. This time, the enemy is different, Mr. Jones, but the waters are the same. You received already $5,000. $20,000 in United States currency will be deposited to your account at any bank you elect to show for Professor Montel to this island. And another $25,000 bonus when you bring him back safely with all the information he seeks. What about the sub? Did it volunteer, too? One does not pick up a first-class submarine in the junkyard, Mr. Jones. We have salvaged a Japanese submarine. What class? I-203. Sewer pipe. Had one on my tail once for six hours. Taylor, look her over? Yes. Start getting her refitted? Yes. Armed? Mr. Jones, the object of this mission is scientific investigation, not combat. Professor, am I in command? That's right. Then we arm the sub. That is, if you want me to get you back in one piece. Did you also salvage a crew? We have picked volunteers, experienced men. There will be two scientists on board, Professor Montel and his assistant, Professor Gerard. We aren't positive which island it is, but a certain freighter, the Kiang Ching, has been up to this area several times before, with cargoes of concrete and heavy metals. She's loading again at Tianjin. The last time I tailed a freighter, my price was six fifty a month, and I had to buy my own uniforms. All right. I want my own key men, men who served with me before. You name them, and we'll get them. Like you got me, huh? For cash. If it's necessary. As I said before, Mr. Jones, each man has his own reason for living and his own price for dying. I hope for all of us that it will be a bon voyage. Give up! Help him with the line! Wir brauchen mehr Leute! Give up! You! You, Capino! Give him a hand with the torpedo. Where's the jank from in charge? Where can you pitch it out? How many hands do you think I got, Ruben? Mr. Newman, to you. Imbecile, imbazzori, imbagliori, ground sei altro. Io t'ho conciato a te per questo così che stai a me. Now make sure you give me the reading on that battery. Right, Skip. Come on! Come on! Turn it on, boys! Turn it on! Come on! Hey! Come on now! Easy now! Come on! Come on! Come on! All right, hold! All right, boys, make her fast to the cleat. Hey. 
Don't you ever take a bath. Oh, shut up. Eh, hey, shut up. Is that the extent of your vocabulary? What'd you ever give up the wrestling racket for anyway? I just found out it was phony. That's the trouble with the... I say, that's the trouble with these phony wrestlers, Doug Boat. They never take a bath. We do, too. Exactly. The after valve won't turn. What? The after valve won't turn. No, no, the other way. Everything backwards. Nobody who lost the wall or subs like this. A skipper. Yeah. That guy Wells. Any good? Best engineer out of Australia. Wish we had Wilbur. Yeah. With Charlie Wilbur handling the engines on the both in, there was nothing to worry about. Here is the three striper now. Yeah, so I hear. Skipper had number two scopes. Don't work. What's the matter with it? Can't get the rust out of it. How about number one? Didn't check it. Lift her up, hold her. The professor topside wants to see the captain. Send him down. It's part of the brass behind this. Now, if he looks familiar, don't say anything. I'll explain later. Hello, professor. Welcome aboard, sir. Captain. Well, we're trying to put this sewer pipe together with a little spit and a lot of sweat. I guess we'll make it, all right. Captain Jones. What's the matter? Is there something wrong? I'm sorry to say we cannot permit one of your crew to make this expedition. What do you mean? They were all hand-picked. We cannot trust this one. Who? The torpedo man, Revenick. Oh, one of the men you picked. I could have told you that all the time, a knothead. Did you screen all my men, too? Very closely, including you. Okay, I'll get rid of Revnik right away. Good. Hold her, what? She the replacement, Doc? Gentlemen. This is Professor Gerard, my assistant and my right arm. Well, hi, Denise, this is Captain Jones. Captain Jones. Glad to know you, Professor. Well, if I'd known about this, I'd have cut my price. <laughs> Boys, these two professors are going with us as cargo. What? You heard me. Have you blown a gasket? Nobody takes a female along a pig boat. Look, Junior, you're going to give me that 2,000-year-old Navy bilge that they're bad luck? Take a look at it. What's so bad about that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Ah, <laughs> they're all Jonas. It's traditional. Yes. Well, not if I do tell me, j'ai eu tort. Non, tu l'as pas tort, tu as besoin de moi. Next to Look, Skipper, I made up my mind. Count me out. Okay. Anybody else? I'll give you jokers five minutes to sleep on it, and remember, if I have to, I can replace every one of you. Captain, I do not like it either. Ein Fräulein an einem Unterseeboot, das habe ich nie gehört. Mit so vielen Frauen war ein Volkstum. Ich wollte dir etwas sagen, etwas in der Desk, tutti il giorno. Ich non sono qui per insultare nessuno. Oh, scusa mi. Perhaps you are right. In your estimation, I am a, a female. But first, I am a scientist, and a good one. And I am not the only scientist who is not of your sex. There are many, like Dr. Lisa Meitner, who played an important part in the development of the atom bomb. Like Madame Curie, who discovered radium. I have grown up in laboratories. All my life I've worked with men. Never have I interfered, and never have they resented me. Professor Montel and I have, have much to accomplish. And I shall appreciate it if you would not let my my presence be the cause of a, of a minor mutiny. I like you. I like you all. And I shall try my best to make you like me. As a scientist. Man, that 
was quite a mouthful for a female. <laughs> <laughs> That's no female. That's a scientist. All right, come on. We got a lot of work to do. Let's go. Hi, Mr. Fujimori. Professor, where's your assistant? Are you prepared to sail? I'll let you know tomorrow after we make the running dive test. There's no tomorrow left for us. The freighter Kang Ching sailed from Titsun a half hour ago. You must leave right away. What are you talking about? We've only been working for two weeks. We got a lot of work left to do on this tub. You must leave by dark to overtake her. What about the running test? As an amateur, might I suggest that we try the running test while we are running? Doc, there are about a hundred ways of losing a submarine. You just come up with one of the best. We haven't even checked the torpedo tubes yet. You know what that means if we have to call on fish? It means we're dead. You've got to leave tonight. Okay, Buster, you're buying this trip. You want me to chance it? It's not what we want, Captain Jones. It's what must be done. All right, just as long as the professor here knows what he's letting himself in for. We've arranged airplane contact to give you a position on a Kang Ching. I'll lay contact. It's blinker or radio. Well, neither is without risk. We've decided cork drop is safest. This contains your code. And this contains your schedule for contacts. Oh, just one more thing. I want a clear-cut directive detailing my specific authority. You'll find it all in here, Captain. At sea, you are in complete command. On land, Professor Montel is in command. May I wish you the best of luck? Thanks. Time is any, Mr. Newman. Take her down to periscope depth. Yes, sir. Clear the bridge. Dive. <laughs> Sit right here. Captain, <laughs> dream satisfactory at periscope depth. Very well. Jono. Yes, sir? Give Wells a hand with those starboard engine blueprint translations, will you? I take care of it, Captain. Everything's tight, the forward torpedo room. We're going to try her down deep. Have all stations checked, let me know. Aye, aye, Captain. This is that test we were talking about today, Professor. Now? Now. And don't get nervous. We crack up, you won't get a chance to feel it. Take it easy, it'll be all right. Put her on the bottom, Mr. Newman. Two degrees down bubble. Flood negative. Flood negative. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Coffee, Professor? No, thanks. How about you? Two hundred feet, Captain. See if we can hit the roof. Take her up, Mr. Newman. Close all main ballast vents. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. 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 Blow all main ballast. Blow all main ballast.
What's with the airbags, Holder? Airbanks dry. Open the emergency banks. Put them on the line. They won't open. They've got to open. We checked everything. All these signs are all fouled up. I have to try every valve. Oh, no, wait a minute. Jodo, come to the control room. Unsnarl these Japanese signs. I can translate it. That one reads open emergency airbank. What? Open emergency airbank. Go ahead, try it. Airbank's on the line. Good, thanks. Okay, put her on the roof. Capito? Just a few leaks around the stuffing glands. I marked them. Okay, make a full sweep, Ski. All clear, Skipper. Rig for red. Up, scope. Better move out, Professor. This helps get our eyes used to the dark when we go up. Open the hatch, Holder. Did a good job translating that sign, Doc. Professor Girard is M.O.L. M.O.L.? Master of Oriental Languages. Oh? Drapo, Drapo. Down, Scope. Glad to have you aboard, Professor. Glad to be aboard. Wants to know if it's all right to come up with a fresh air. Which one? The one with the beer. Oh. Okay. Come to course 355, ahead full on both engines. Aye, aye, You won't need your umbrella, Professor. She's a dry boat. It's nothing to worry about. Almost everybody gets a touch of claustrophobia first time down. It's not claustrophobia, Captain. It's the realization that at last, our mission has begun. If anyone had told me six months ago that today I would be on a submarine headed for Arctic waters in search of a secret atomic base, I just can't believe it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, uh, what about your assistant, Professor? What makes a girl who looks like that get mixed up in science? She comes from a family of scientists. She was a child prodigy. At 14, she entered college. At 18, she studied at Göttingen. She is really very brilliant. <laughs> a child prodigy with a body by Fisher. Eh? And this is the greatest pig boat in the whole submarine service, the USS Bofin. It's one we served on together. Me, the chief, gunner, Doug Boat, and the skipper. <laughs> beautiful, ain't she? Oh, yes. Very beautiful. You know, something else is very beautiful. All my life, I've been wanting to find a girl called Denise. Oh, Ski, I'm sure you will find her. Oh, I found her all right. You see, I lost no time at all in learning your first name. Yep, Denise. It's always been my favorite name. I, I never met a Denise, but I always knew I would. You see, from the moment I saw you, I said, Lafayette, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I always knew I'd meet a girl called Denise. D-E-N-I. Don't let him kid you, honey. I just seen him put your name on his arm. Look. All right, Bob, you are... No, by Jonas. They were beefing over the dame. Wasn't her fault. He's stiff. She okay? Yeah. Just drift up a little. Take care of him, Holder. Oh, here we 
Here, let me help you. Let's see. I'm really very sorry about this, Professor. That drug was a last-minute replacement. It was all right when we sober. I'm sorry. This is the last thing I, I wanted to happen. I had to break out sooner or later. Take another look here. It's lucky you still got your teeth. Don't get nervous, Doc. Nobody's gonna bite you. Don't you think the pharmacist should treat me? If it's necessary? He's got his hands full with those two lugs. Besides, there's nothing he can do that I can't, you know. Oh, my, he got you so greasy. <laughs> okay. You know what a log is? Yes. You do, huh? Well, I'm supposed to keep a detailed report of everything that happens. It's for Mr. Fujimori. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How'd it start? I was working on a new formula. Wensky asked if he could show me his chest. Show you his chest? Yes. Oh. And then what? Then he removed his shirt. No kidding. He wanted me to see his tattoo. Oh, no. It was a beautiful tattoo. I'll bet it was. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the intoxicated one rubbed it off. Naturally. Tell me, uh, did he make a pass at you? A pass? Did he try to kiss you? Yes, and he did. He did, huh? Did you cold cock him? What? Did you hit him? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold the phone, hold the phone. Now say that in English. I slapped him. Yeah, that, huh? Uh, tell me, uh, you hit him after he kissed you? Yes. Not before, huh? I do not understand. <laughs> well, you see, Professor, I, I just want to make sure my report is factual. I, I couldn't put Captain that... Captain Jones, is this report for Mr. Fujimori? Or for you? Uh, uh -huh. mm. Now, really, a child prodigy ought to be able to figure that one out. Don't you think? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Au revoir, Professor. <laughs> now, listen to me. I don't want any more beats, you understand? If I hear of anybody making a play for that girl, I'll personally shoot him out through torpedo tube number one. Captain, is it still a secret where we're going? We're tailing a freighter to an island in the North Pacific. We're gonna sink her? We're gonna sneak into this island, take a look and sneak out. This is a scientific expedition. Yeah, but Skipper, what are we looking for? Four-leaf clovers. What, what if the guys on the island don't like us? Look. I know you're all itching for a little action, but you only get it if we have to defend ourselves, so relax. Oui, c'est bien ce que je pensais. Vous placez la bombe atomique à l'intérieur de la bombe hydrogène pour obtenir une chaleur assez intense. Est-ce que le carbone 14 peut contaminer l'air sur une grande étendue? C'est difficile à prévoir parce que. Tiens, quelqu'un a soigné ta lèvre? Qui ça? Le capitaine Jones? Ce que je ne comprends pas, c'est que la bombe atomique... Je ne savais pas qu'il était docteur aussi, le capitaine Jones. <rire> tu m'excuses Mais bien sûr, oui. Je suis fatiguée. Oui. Je vais me coucher. Mm -hmm. Bonne nuit. Bonne nuit.
I'm speaking French. Oh. Voulez-vous fumer une cigarette? Oh, you mean voulez-vous fumer une cigarette? <laughs> That's what I said. No. Fumer. Fumer? No, no, no. You have to form your lips like this. Fumer. 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 I think I better go now. Thank you. You know, someday I'm going to find out what color her eyes are. Mm. Good morning, Captain Jones. You wanted to see me? Why did you let me sleep through that plane contact? I thought you needed the rest. You were on duty for almost 20 hours. Didn't you stop to think how important that message might be? Of course. So I made sure that it was not by decoding it myself. As you see, it reports only that the Qiangqing has made no change in speed or course. I knew that was of no importance. Professor, did it ever occur to you that I might be steering a course to be... You've lost us approximately two hours. I'm very sorry, Captain. And I think I have learned some. I hope so. If you want to listen in on conversations, use the intercom. It's easier. That conversation I would prefer not to have heard, but I was waiting to see you. Okay, you see me. I'm busy. Many years have I been with Professor Montel, but never before have I heard anyone speak like you to the greatest scientist in his field. Professor Montel's field isn't commanding a screwball submarine. Mine is. If such rudeness is necessary, I hope this will be a very short cruise. What do you want to see me about? Je n'ai plus rien à vous dire, vous comprenez C'est clair Quel grossier personnage Quel brut Jodo. Yes, sir. In the future, when a message comes into this boat, I get it, no matter who says it's unnecessary. You understand Yes, sir. Vous êtes parlé de la sorte, mais qu'est-ce qu'il s'imagine Oh, 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 oh. Il avait raison, le Captain Jones. Mais ça n'empêche pas... Non, moi, je non, 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 je t'en prie. This time, he was right. May we come on the bridge? Sure, help yourself. Contact plane approaching on schedule. Good enough. Okay, Charlie. Doc. Intelligence reports Kiang Ching carrying unconventional type 61J capsule. Signed Fujimori. What's a 61J capsule? A charge to explode an A-bomb. Hey, Skipper. Radar shows surface object approaching. Bearing 355 degrees. Speed? I can't tell yet, but he's closing fast. Range? 3,800 yards. Maybe the plater has seen our signal and comes after us. Rig for red. Subs after it. I 
guess so. I thought this was a, a scientific expedition. It is, and we're gonna play it safe. No use getting a bloody nose unless we have to. She's submerged and listening for us. That's why she stopped pinging. What does this mean? It means she's saving her torpedoes, waiting till we surface. Just one more day, Doc, and we'd have finished overhauling those torpedo tubes. Can you see her scope? No. Well, we can play possum, too. How's the hydrogen? Build up to 3%. Well, we can't chance surfacing here. We've got to make a run for it. Professor, I think you both better stay in your quarters. Down scope. It's still on our stern, Skipper. How's that hydrogen gas? Attention, attention. Yes. Là. You better keep off the bridge, Professor. I am not going up. Skipper would blow his top if you even find you here in the control room. Sit down, Professor. Grab some air. Have you identified the submarine? No. We haven't even seen her yet. We're topside trying to spot her now. No sign of her yet, Skipper. Sonar tells us she's not far. Alert the gun crew. What? I know. We're not looking for trouble, but we'd be fools not to protect ourselves. Alert for battle stations. Gun crew, stand by to man the deck gun. What about these torpedoes? You know those tubes haven't been checked. Forget the torpedoes. Where is she now, Jono? Range 1500. Either she's moving out or she's going to surface. There she is, Skipper. They're coming out on deck. Ask them where we are, Charlie. Why not man the five-incher now? No. The minute they spot a crew near that gun, they'll throw torpedoes at us. What are they saying? They want to know who we are and what we're doing here. Tell them we're a private scientific expedition headed for the Arctic. They insist on boarding us. Well, keep stalling. Tell them we don't understand. Ask them to repeat the message. Boy, Pop! Put one over our bow. Keep asking them to repeat, Charlie. Turn our nose into her. Steer zero, zero, one. And get ready to man that gun.
Subtle to the bottom. All back full. Enemy torpedo fired. Number two fish out of that basket. Secure all running machinery. Remain silent. Form a bucket line. Dump the water in the engine room bilges. That tub's laying for us, Skipper. She's coming real close. Provision data. Trick we are. Now watch that salt water. We don't want any chlorine gas in the boat. Got to turn on the fans. If they heard our fans, you wouldn't have to worry about the heat coming in, boy. All right, I'll fill in the picture for you quick. We got torpedoes, but our tubes aren't in commission to fire them. And the red sub's parked on the bottom like we are, waiting to pick us up on sonar. Once she does, she'll throw more fish at us. So it's a question of who can hold out longer without air, the reds or us. If we break first, Chances are it'll be our last break. And we're loaded with hydrogen. Liable to explode. But we got one thing in our favor. We can save oxygen by shutting up. That's all. Nothing. Nothing. Forget it. 
to save Juice. Shifts to red. Keep your ears open, Ski. I am sorry, Captain, for being so stupid. It's all right. Save your breath. See, you had to use the knife. If you didn't close the hatch, we would all be dead. You beat. You better get back to your bunk and take it easy. Come on. to tell you how. Don't talk. Was going to do the trick, but he's suffering from shock and loss of blood. If you don't get some air right away, you're going to have only one professor for cargo. There's 50 grand in that bunk. 50 grand is worth a little. Soto, turn on the white lights. Boys, I'm gonna try a long shot. If our first couple of torpedoes miss us, we got a chance. 
I'd rather pass out without air than have a torpedo come plowing through us. Now, when we start the pump, we're liable to get a spark. Maybe it'll burn off the hydrogen, maybe it won't. If it doesn't, we'll blow up so fast you'll never feel it. Good luck to all of us. Straight? Yes, sir. Now, here's where we find out if we've lived right. No more chance of explosion. Pass the word along. And build up the turn slowly. Hold down the noise. Yes, sir. All ahead, one third. Yes, sir. Take her up and level at a 175 feet, Mr. Newman. Yes, sir. One nine zero feet. One nine zero feet. Stand by the ram.
that? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> now take a good, deep breath of fresh air. Fencing me in the breeze. Let me have a little house made of bamboo mat. Oh, please, not putting fence around where I am at. Or needing lots of room so I can swing in cat. <laughs> not fencing me in. Let me have a tree so the birdies will make a nest and I can have him bird nest soup. It's all real cool, man. Just set me free way out yonder and I'll be an independent nincompoop. This are the end, Jackson. I want to awake in the morning when the grass is dewy. Watch my little woman while she cook a chop of suey. Having fence around me is a lot of a hooey. Not a fencing me in. I'm learning French, but like Chinley learned that American song. You're wasting your time, Junior. Who said the joie? Where's the other card? It's là sur la table. Hi. Hello. Say, uh, if that music disturbs you, I could have it turned off. Oh, no, I, I love music. Oh. That? Mm-hmm. Well, how's the hand, Professor? Wonderful, Captain, as you see. Good, glad to hear it. And how are you, Professor? I'm fine, thank you. Swell. You know what, uh, when Jones, I... Captain Jones, come outside, please. Freighter inside of land. Excuse me. cannot be this wrong. All we are getting is a normal count. You ought to be happy. Don't misunderstand. Nothing would please me more than to know that our suspicions are unfounded. Then let's move out. There's nothing here but this two-bit garrison and some beat-up storage tanks. It's a great pity I cannot talk to them. They are worlds apart. After all, they are human. <laughs> Let's go. At moment. 
Forget it. Shot right through the head. Let's get out of here. Give me a hand. Let's get him in the boat. You wanted to talk to one of these humans? I got one for you. Wipe down your coats. Must be combing the whole area for us, but so far nothing, huh? Not even a seagull. Hey, Doug Book, you sure this jelly I'm rubbing on my chest won't eat off my tattoo? What are you worried about? You can always get another. Are you nuts? That's my piece de resistance. Your piece de what? <laughs> That's French. I've been practicing. Messy pas. <laughs> you need more practice. Captain Jones, Professor Montel wants to see you in sick bay. One oil back? No, no, thank you, Jimmy. Thank Go you. Go to, Jimmy. This is wonderful. You want to see me, Professor? Yes. Denise has just translated his orders. His name is Hosin. He's a pilot en route to Kevlock Island for special duty. So what? Kevlock must be the island Captain Taylor photographed. Well, how do you figure that? An Air Force pilot would hardly be assigned to duty on an island without an airstrip. And as you know, Kevlock is the only island Indicated by name in this entire chain. It appears to be due north of our present position. And what do you suggest we do about it? It seems to me our course is obvious. Not in my book, Doc. What do you mean? I mean, you said once that each man's got his own reason for living and his own price for dying. Well, my reason for living is 50 grand. I'm not sticking my neck out again. Is one neck that important, Captain? It is when it's mine. What kind of man are you? Ne pensant jamais qu'à vous-même. Qu'est-ce que vous Hold it, hold it. Let's not gang up with a lot of double talk. I'm a businessman. Maybe to a couple of flag wavers like you, I'm a mercenary, all right. But I lived up to my part of the contract. The deal was to tail the freighter to the island, put you ashore, and get you back to Tokyo. Nobody said anything about a second island. So as far as I'm concerned, mission completed. We're going home. Any objections? 
Yes. I hate to use authority. But if I have to, I will. I didn't want it to come to this. But as long as you have mentioned the contract, study it closely, Captain. You will find a paragraph stating that I, and I alone, shall determine when the mission is finished. And in my book, Captain, the mission will be finished after I am taken to Kevlock, given the chance to examine the island and return to Tokyo. Jodo. Yes, sir? Head due north. Did you say north? You heard me. Set a new course for Kevlock Island. It's on your chart. Yes, sir. Donne-moi donc ce rapport que je t'ai pas laissé ce matin avec lui. Tu l'as là Mais il n'est pas compris. C'est mal Ok, Doc, let's go. What's the matter? My knee. Well, I thought you said it was okay this morning. It was. I'll manage in a few moments. Not a chance. You'll just be in the way. It will improve by tomorrow, I'm sure. Sorry, Doc. We're not hanging around these waters that long. This is a powder keg. Il a absolutely raison. Nous ne pouvons pas rester ici plus longtemps. Qu'est-ce que je peux faire? Laisse-moi y aller à ta place. Nous n'avons pas le choix. Tu le pourrais, en effet. Mais moi, je ne peux pas te demander d'aller courir en danger pareil. C'est pas toi qui me le demandes. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on? What are you talking about? Captain Jones. My assistant will accompany you. What? She has sufficient training to compute figures, determine strength, and identify elements, if there are any on this island. You mean you'd, you'd let her go? With the exception of me, Professor Gerard is the only member of this expedition capable of performing this task. Ah, oh, you're both you crazy. Will take her ashore and follow her instructions, as you would have followed mine. She is not going, and that's final. You still cannot take an order, can you, Captain Jones? And what's behind that crack? Exactly what you think is behind it. You stay here, keep your eyes open. What about her? I can carry her equipment. She can take care of her own equipment.
afraid we have found what we were looking for. A guy get counter reaction like this can mean only one thing. This figure screw. What are they saying? They are looking for Lam Song, a missing soldier. We gotta stay put till they move out. Come on. Very good officer, except for one thing. Go on, I'm fascinated. You could give orders, but you couldn't take them. Now look, I, I know what you're talking about, but if you want to know what makes a guy tick, you've got to look beyond the record. Those Philippine guerrillas were cut off and surrounded. They had to have ammunition and supplies. I couldn't just sit there in my can and let them die. I knew the waters were mine, but I figured I could get in, get out without a scratch. So I wrote my own orders. I lost my sub, 26 men. And if I had to, I'd do it again. been in Paris? No, never. You would love it. Americans always do. But we can't stay here. If they hold us up till morning, we might never get back. I'm gonna see if there's another way out of here. Come on.
L'enfant Ne hai schon mal. Certitude. Les calculs atomiques enregistrés sont exactement ce que tu as prévu. Il n'y a pas d'erreur possible. This confirms our worst fears. The atomic reaction is unmistakable. I don't get it. I mean, I can't figure out why that bomber was on the runway. What would a B-29 be doing on a red air base? It just doesn't make sense. Say, didn't you tell me that that red officer we picked up on the other island was in the Air Force? Yes, a major. Were you ever able to question him? Impossible. I tried, but he would not say a word. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Hey, did you talk to that Chinese prisoner, Chen Li? Kim Ho Wa. Le Tong Gu Gan Fan. Gong Me La. Go Ri Me King Ko Kei. Ki Ri Me King Gong Wa La. He has not seen the prisoner. The prisoner has not seen him. Hold her. Dig up that portable microphone and plant it in the torpedo room. Then get the prisoner and lock him in there. Make sure he doesn't see the microphone. Right. Give him a hand, Ski. Come on, let's get into some dried clothes. We got work to do. You have a plan? I'm going to find out what this is all about. Come on, Shin Lee, we got a job for you. Let's go. You guys got everything set? Yep. OK. Now, you're sure Shin Lee understands exactly what he's supposed to say, huh? <laughs> What do you say? He says he would do anything for you. He wants you to strike him in the face. To make it look more real. Hold it. He wants you to do it. He says it will not hurt if you do. All right, boy. You okay? What's he saying? He says, the prisoner is very intelligent and must be fooled. He wants you to hit him harder. All 
right, get him out. Let's go. Here. Come on, take him. Mr. Don, then, uh, you lie to what down the old young as you know. Tow my name, Nella. Who? Who's gone, man? More, one more, you can't. I'm going to come. Tin ho, tin ho, tin ho. I'm just going to tell you. This is incredible. What's it all about, Skipper? This is the screwball plot of all time. They're gonna drop an atomic bomb on Korea or Manchuria and blame it on us. They're taking off tomorrow at dawn in that made-over bomber. He took Jager San Gekula. Okay, Nan. You Nan? He sent him out. Now listen to me. I'm shoving off for the island alone. I'll park myself right here around the mouth of this cave. Now you'll submerge half mile beyond the runway, right around here, so you'll be able to spot my signal. Now a heavy load of fuel is gonna bring that bomber out low. So when I give you the signal, too short, too long, too short, that'll mean the plane's taking off. That'll give you just time enough to surface and fire. I want every gun in action. That means everybody. That plane has to be knocked out of the sky. 
Now, the minute you hit it, crash, dive to the bottom and stay there because everything's gonna break loose when that bomber hits. There's a cove at the north end right here. That's where I'll hide. Tomorrow night at 10 sharp, I'll give you three short blinkers. Pick me up. If I don't show up, shove off, head for home. Any questions? I forbid this insanity. Forbid all you want to, Professor. That plane is not going to make it. It is dreadful enough to bring back the terrifying report that our suspicions are confirmed. But we cannot take it upon ourselves to commit an act of war. No matter how we feel, we are civilians. I am responsible for this expedition. I order you to take this submarine back to Tokyo. I don't care about you and your expedition. There's an enemy bomber out there made up to look like an American bomber. It's going to drop the biggest egg in history, and we're going to take the rap for it. I don't like that. So from now on, Professor, this is my expedition. The boat's gone. What? The boat's gone. Montel took it. Well, why didn't you stop him? We didn't get the chance. He was on deck with it. Before we knew what happened, he was in the boat and gone. Where's the girl? On the bridge. Please. He doesn't want you to stop him. Well, why didn't you stop him? All you had to do was yell. He knows your plan. He'll carry it out. That's his orders. The trouble with you geniuses. Full of big ideas, now you're fouling up the whole works. You know that island's crawling with soldiers. He knows it, too. Then why'd you let a nice old guy like that take a shortcut to the cemetery? He's no ordinary two-bit professor, you know. He's Montel, top man in his field. But he's old and helpless, doesn't know his way outside of a test tube. You ought to know that. You work close enough with him. What kind of a woman are you? Ah! Ah! He's got any... Ah! Sure got a lot of guts. Only thing I can't figure out is why the big mystery. Why didn't she let us know he's her old man? Well, that's what you have to pay for having a famous father. She's been on a spot all her life. Wanted to make good on her own, and she did. And he was proud because she did. Any sign of him at all? No. Not yet. There he is. And there's his signal. Battle surface, gun action, down slope. We better get below. Please. Okay.
must have gone off under it. Bring her back on course. Take her up to periscope depth. Periscope depth. All compartments report damage and casualties. for home. <laughs> Each man has his own reason for living, Mr. Jones, and his own price for dying. Mm -hmm. 